not here. Because you're a nutcase. <laughs> it was bonkers in you. This is Limpsfield Grange in Surrey, the only state-run boarding school in Britain specialising in girls with autism. You have an imaginary friend next to you when you don't make any friends. And then someone sits on your imaginary friend, which is really annoying. I think having friends is a bit more important than schoolwork. Oh, yeah, I did have one friend for Bob, but he was just pretend. Children with autism can struggle to make sense of the world around them, causing overwhelming anxiety. I think it's actually really strange to it. It's a mental disorder that develops in early childhood. Oh, I've had to deal with all these changes this week yes. and I find it really difficult. Yes, you do. Repetitive behaviour, routine and obsessions are all part of their condition. Wowee. I have pictures of boys who are fancy. I like them being the same in like five rows. When we cleared her iPod the other day, she had 1160 of the same photo. You know, when you're worried about something, it just becomes overwhelming, doesn't it? There's no cure for it as well. The girls are aged 11 to 16, and more than half of them are on the autistic spectrum. You're funny, Jennifer. The most common misconception about autism is that girls don't have it. With increasing numbers of girls being diagnosed every year, the true extent to which girls suffer from the condition is perhaps only now being recognised. We don't know how many autistic girls there are out there. There's a lot more than actually we think. This school prepares each girl for an unforgiving outside world with tough love. Okay, that's not an option because this is a school. And extraordinary patience. Teaching here is like being involved in psychological warfare. You never really know what's going to walk through the door. How could I possibly be human if my own species weren't accepting it? Good morning, Lowry. Good morning, Mrs. Chips. Good morning, Daisy. Good morning, Mrs. Chips. Just one more <laughs> Charlie and Bella are, well, one of the girls in year 10 describe them as they're like Romeo and Juliet. Aww. Okay? They love each other. I know we've got some girls at Limpsfield Grange that find it easier to spend time with animals sometimes because there's no pressure from animals um, and they don't ever say unkind things, do they? Who here does like spending time with animals? And there's quite a few of you, isn't there? At my old school, I was just a small little mouse and everyone else was like, they were like giants. And put your left hand into... They want to have friends. Having friends is so complicated. <laughs> Friendships don't follow set rules and that is really, really difficult for somebody who has autism. People said I was probably weird and all that is probably because I looked like the a, like an actually or, ordinary girl, like everyone else. Abigail. Abigail's the quietest member of 7C. Would you like to hold my hand? I'm not sure if she doesn't speak because it's giving her some control or if she's got such incredibly high anxiety that she feels unable to speak. Together we make 7C. Every girl here is a conundrum. Come on, Abby. Abigail, stand up, please. <laughs> Abigail. Right, we need to go to... Thank you very much. We need to go to science, don't we? They haven't had any friendships outside of their family, probably. When they come in Year 7, they've already experienced some depression, feelings of isolation. They're quite bullied, they've got really low self-esteem. We need to go to science. On day one, we basically know what's in the paperwork, and often that's actually a description of somebody that we don't really recognise. You do have to be a detective to work here, because you have to follow lots of different hunches and leads, and you have to try things out. 
Would you find it easier if your desk was near to the door? Because I'm wondering if it's a bit hard sometimes, if you're late, to then walk all the way across the room. OK, come on then, straight away. At the moment, we're desperately trying okay. to communicate with her. Okay. Right, come on then. Come on, lads. We've used all of our negotiation skills. If you've got somebody who's a selective mute, then we need to try and work out what's going on. I'm a funny girl, a special girl. I've got Asperger syndrome and ADHD. <laughs> I talk to strangers. Sometimes I'm rude, over the top, crazy. I really like loud music. And I like dancing with boys. Especially holding the hands. Ben is my life. I have a boyfriend. And when I'm not with him, I feel too, too sad. It's like now I feel really sad because he's, he's only in Catrum, so I can easily walk to Catrum and see him, but I won't be allowed. It's just annoying. That's Katie and her boyfriend. With autism and you get a boyfriend, you have that fairy tale dream of marriage kids from meeting that person on day one. If you click instantly, you think that's it, you're set for life. I want to touch Ben. I'm quite obsessed with him. You know all 722 Pokemon off by heart. We see girls who have specialist interests that take up an awful lot of their time emotionally and their thinking time. So these are the ones I haven't used this since. We've got students who have relationships with objects that they kind of invest as much feeling and emotion in as they do with their real members of their real family. How would it make you feel if I just went... Angry. We've got some girls who are completely obsessed with boys, actually, and that's their main point of focus. Why do you become obsessed by boys? Because they're cute and they've got, they got deep voices. And they, they look smart. Who has a Facebook account in here? Not me. I, I don't have it anymore. Why don't you have one anymore? <laughs> I got blocked. Who blocked it? Facebook, please. <laughs> Facebook police? <laughs> I was harassing someone too much. Right. It was because I thought he was fit. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, then, in thinking if you can find out their name, then you can go and have a look and see if you can find them and see if you can be friends with them? That's basically stalking, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. One time that she did get things wrong was with my son. He was coming in once a week to help the girls with homework and Katie um, took a liking to him. That culminated in her going onto his Facebook page to download photos of him and I think she had several hundred by the time we became aware of it. When we cleared her iPod the other day, she had 1160 of the same photo. Don't know who he is, where she got it from, but she comes fixated and obsessed very quickly. Oh, my iPads, I have pictures of boys who I fancy. I like them being the same in like five rows, so I can make it neater. I fancy them all. We can't let her out of our sight, really. Like most of the girls, Katie boards on weekdays, looked after by a dedicated care team whose job is to teach these girls how to become independent and cope with their autism. In boarding, we try really hard to meet the individual needs of the students, so whether that be an emotional need or an educational need. What has everyone done for knickers? How often should you change your knickers? Every, every day. day. OK, tick that one if you're done every day. And then we place the sanitary towel in between, OK? And then we pull it up. <laughs> and there it is. The girls have specific times where they meet with a member of staff to talk over their day or their worries or offload. I've got stuff going on, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, you have got stuff going on. Some of the girls find it quite hard to understand facial expressions, so we sometimes refer to these as a good way of a, as a visual aid to talk about them. 
is making your bed something you struggle with, Katie. Definitely. Oh, my back's hurting. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> oh, it's... Why, are you an old lady? No. <laughs> 14-year-old Beth has reluctantly started weekly boarding at Limpsfield Grange after serious problems with her behaviour, both at home and in four other schools. She was an absolute nightmare. She was just head down on the desk. She was refusing to engage in any learning and walking out of class all the time. She was hospitalised over the summer. I think it was a suicidal attempt. She's sort of a jug that's nearly full, and so it doesn't take much to just spill over. It could be that her homework was too difficult, or it's a Monday, or she's just not feeling well, or she's missing her mother. Hello, Beth. After spending six months sitting around at home with no school to go to, Beth now commutes 250 miles every weekend so she can board during the week. Right, I'll leave you to unpack then, yeah? Uh, These are for my 14th birthday... He's my friends from my old school, and that's me. I think I feel more like the girls in these photos than I do the girls here, because I feel quite normal in lots of ways. First time I heard the word autism was pretty when I was about eight. Mum said, oh, we're going to go and see this doctor, see whether there's a reason behind your behaviour, and while you're struggling and stuff. We're here like a Limpsfield Grange. There's lots of rules and people telling you what to do. And at home there isn't. And at home your mum's there and... And it's where you're meant to be. I searched high and low for schools in the area to avoid having to send her away. I knew she didn't want to go away. If there was a school like Limpsfield up the road, she would go there. You know, we had everything, um, tears, screaming, shouting. The most extreme behaviour that I think I've probably come across is um, girls who threaten to kill themselves to make their parents change their minds. So today, this is all about you and how you would make particular decisions. A few days into term, Beth seems determined to sabotage her place Wednesday. at the school so she can return home. I'm in a really, really dark place. I'm self-harming something like three times a day, every day. Mrs Butler, can you help my little friend Beth to get stuck in? You need to read the sheet and answer the questions at the bottom. Right. And when you have done all of that excitement, can you make sure, please, that you are ready to write in today's learning objective? Yes. Okay. In the first week, we had a lot of instances of self-harm, and that can range from girls pulling out their eyelashes and their eyebrows to cutting their arms or scratching themselves or making themselves sick. So from the beginning of term to last Tuesday, we'd had five instances involving Beth. So I'm quite concerned. OK. OK, that's fine. Oh. Finding a hard being back in my classroom. Yeah, it is hard because it's been a really massive change, hasn't it? You know, from being at home... Um, I didn't want to be. No, you didn't. <laughs> but, I I'm, but I think you sort of got to decide to start somewhere, haven't you? The first bit is the staying in the lesson and just listening. <laughs> she felt as if she'd landed somewhere that was completely alien to her. I've learnt how to fit in at a mainstream school and to get on like a normal teenager would. The girls here are weird and wacky. It's hard. He's basically the ghost of my uh, dead hamster called Toby. I have him with me. He's on my hand. It's called Invisible Snibs. Why are you here? Because nowhere else would have me. Halfway through her first term, Abby is still refusing to talk to her teacher, Mrs Chips. Yay! Clever boy! The 
the school think they may have discovered the reason why she has chosen to be selectively mute. Abigail's overheard at home that her mum's not very well. Abigail, I'm going to give you two minutes to make the right choice now. Nothing she says or nothing she does is going to change how well or not well her mum is. So I think she needs to be in control of some aspect of her life. I'm having to really try hard to find ways to show Abby that I'm in control and she's not in control of the situation, and that's quite hard. So remember what we've said, if you've got to worry, if you go to lessons and keep busy, then that helps your worry to get a bit smaller because you get distracted. I completely understand you've got some worries, but what we have to do is learn some ways to make our worries get a bit smaller so that we can manage them. Well, she wrote worried and upset, and then she's crossed upset out, and she's put mum underneath. I think it's actually really strange Abigail, Becky and Jennifer, please. Bye, Jess. Come on. Abigail. We need to go, don't we? Can... Or I can just, we can go and we can turn the lights out and leave you in here. Turn the lights off. Abigail has decided that she wants to stay in school all weekend um, and that it would be fun and that she would live on dog food. So we're just trying to encourage her to come and do the right thing so that she can go home. Her mum wondered, is she a selective mute? Abigail is apparently quite talkative and loud at home. You're naughty. You're naughty. I've actually been diagnosed with breast cancer this last weekend. Abby does know, and we've had a lot of non-empathy and empathy. Bananas! No, what has Mummy got? Cancer! Breath cancer! And what do you think about it? Funny! If they gave me one of the treatments, we would then know what, what can happen to Mummy. Lose your hair! Has Mum talked to you about what cancer is, Ellie? Yes. Would anyone like to see her cancer? And I've told, and it's a, it's a disease, haven't I? It's a disease. It's something Mummy's got inside her body. And you're going to die? No, Mummy may not die. OK? Yeah, you may die. I get it, you may die, don't worry. They don't understand it. You have to just accept them the way they are. I mean, she's, you know, you have to accept an autistic child. I think a lot of people who didn't understand autism probably be angry with what she sometimes says. You know, I, I accept it and that's what I, you know, I love him no matter what. You still got cancer. Yes, I know. People in general, when they see a young person kicking off, they are more likely to think, why can't that parent manage them, rather than thinking, do they have autism? Is there lots of wailing? More sobbing? <laughs> Anxiety has many faces here. I got fun! Their anxieties can get so high that that is completely debilitating for them, that, that it completely stops them from functioning. Um, Katie deals with her anxiety by her flapping and her waving of her arms is like a sensory calming, stimming technique to kind of help her manage. Autism for me is I jump a lot and I'm sensitive and I find things really difficult. During her time at the school, Staff have helped Katie overcome her fear of classrooms, trains and dogs. But her anxieties can still easily spiral out of control. Is that because of Toby? Okay. No, no, I get that. He's quite big. I went in and I saw him and just got really scared. Yeah. Katie's got a massive fear of dogs. 
it's the unpredictability of their behaviour, particularly the noise and particularly the barking. What would be a small step we could take today towards overcoming the fear? I don't know. She will often wear big ear defenders to block out some of that noise. I don't know why she hasn't got them today. I was sensitive because my mum had operation yesterday. She came out this morning. OK. I'm going through quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if it's just one thing, you can usually manage it, can't you? Whereas today, like, you're dealing with lots of little different things. There you go. Come sit down, then. Along with the high levels of anxiety, she also will develop obsessions on thoughts or on particular things. Is it all about Toby? Is it about Mum? I'm also just wondering, is this stuff in science at the moment really hard? Yeah. Oh, OK. Is this the nice man that bought you the roses? Wow. I just can't to think about it. OK. I tell myself you don't mean nothing. It turns out that Katie's ex, Ben, has started a new relationship with Charlotte, who's in Katie's class. When you're not there, I just crumble. I am really heartbroken, actually, yeah. He was, like, saying, oh, I'm not ready for a girlfriend at the moment, but we've been going out for six months, so he must be ready, otherwise he wouldn't go up to Charlotte, would he? Ben, like Katie, has autism and ADHD and goes to the boys' special school nearby. If someone broke up with their boyfriend, it's pretty common that within the month he'd be going out with someone else from here. I saw her, by the way. It's Ben. I can't take him up my head, it's really annoying. Like, last night I was up all night dreaming about him. I'm obsessed with my ex. I've got loads and loads of photos of him saved on my phone. I sometimes talk to the picture, like, going, hello, and, like, I talk to the picture even though he's not there. Only look and hurt like this. Apparently I embarrassed him. Oh, how did you embarrass him? Because, you know, sometimes I laugh loud. Yeah. I was like, I laugh loud. And he told me to shush. I was like, I'm sorry, but I can't. She often texts me to say, I love you. I'd, 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 I'd reply, love you too. And that kind of thing, your usual boyfriend-girlfriend talk. You didn't do anything else to upset him? No? No. OK, then. I came home and had about 72 texts on my phone. And the majority of them just said, Ben. Just, yeah. And he's, he's now talking to Charlotte. Yeah, well, it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's going to make you upset, Katie. Why? She's been saying oh weird stuff God, about me. Oh, you sweetheart! Wait, oh after, everyone says hi. Hey. Don't include me. Don't say Katie says hi. He used to text me, like, you're my path for the rest of my life. She was my first girlfriend, yeah. And I guess the reason why we ended it, because um, I wasn't... I was a bit nervous of the relationship. Katie, bless her, seemed to be going a bit more ahead than what I was. Do you think you'll be a mum, get married? Maybe. Yeah? I was planning to, but... Yeah. But there's plenty of fish in the sea. We did say that, didn't we? This is my way to reward your week, making you stand here, holding yes. your stuff. You're bouncing me in front of everyone. <laughs> At the end of the week, all the girls head home to their families. You don't. You do. It won't be long. I want to go home. Well, I don't know. Some people might not. You know how much I like I know going you home. <laughs> Have a nice weekend. For Beth, who's struggling with self-harm, it's a long journey back home to Warwickshire. That was when she was about four days old. And she was taken back into hospital, struggling to breathe. She had hydrocephalus, so her head had grown. Um, and the pressure on her brain was increasing because she had a, a blocked duct in her brain. So um, what, they have to drill into you? Yeah, and yep, they uh, go through the soft spot, which is a lot less invasive than they would do now. You just have a really infectious laugh. Never left my side, did you, Bethany, really? Still don't. <laughs> yeah, still don't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was about this age, I was about eight. Her behaviour started to you know, get worse and worse. You do think, oh, you know, what have I done, have I... Sport her too much, or you know, but I, kn I knew that I hadn't. I knew that I treated them all the same, and I, you know, but you just question everything. How were you behaving at that time, Beth? Really violently, quite angrily. First of all, they diagnosed Asperger's, and then they brought up PDA, 
She keeps oh, looking at me. What's the matter? She keeps staring at me. Right. She's done it all no, day. No, stop. Beth was diagnosed with pathological demand avoidance, which is a sub type of autism but in Beth's case it really is to do with her see seeking to demand and control her environment and refusing to comply with simple demands. Do your science and do your textiles. I don't know if she was talking yeah? about me exactly. Okay. She looked at me the whole time. Right that's been dealt with. You need to focus on your homework all right. You could ask her a very simple thing and um, it would cause anxiety and therefore she would have to do whatever she could to avoid that demand. She would just get really, like, violent and then I didn't really understand that there was, like, a reason for it. I was just really, like, worried all the time and scared that, you know, she'd suddenly... your mum wouldn't be around or something and then, you know, something would happen. She often used to say she wanted to get rid of Gracie. I hate you, I'm going to kill you, you know, um, I wish you'd never been born. Um, and then she would say to me, why can't you send her away? Why can't you get rid of her? And then it would keep escalating and move on from shouting to getting a knife out the drawer then and running after. And, you know, we had to put doors in between whoever she was running at, you know, generally would be her sister. And she started seeing a psychiatrist. She was worried that actually she would act out on some of the threats, you know, the saving grace now is that they get on so well and, you know, they're close sisters now. So, you know, you're just worried that, you know, this anger would get to a point where she would actually carry out something more serious. Abby has started boarding for two nights a week. And although she isn't communicating with teachers, she has made her first real friend in school. Yeah. Abby, oh, yeah. how are you today? Good. I would describe Abby as funny and enjoyable to be around. Abby, what would you describe me? Nice to be around. Bye, Abby. Abby, see you in the tutor. Have a good afternoon. I'm not autistic, but I think autistic girls find it really hard to make friends and start a conversation. I would like everyone to see Abby like I do. Abby? Yes? When you were younger, did you have an imaginary friend? Yes, definitely. What was, what was his name? Her name. Her name? Lily. I had a mountain friend because I was sometimes lonely. Did you want someone around you? Or someone around. And to play with and to talk with. Yeah. Same. My imagery still comes to school with me. My imagery still comes to school with me. Maybe we can reach one yeah. day. Maybe tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. The danger is that other children will start to talk for her, to speak for her, to answer things for her. Have you become Abby's voice? Yes. yes, she has! Despite her new friend, in school Abby is still in her own world, not talking to teachers or attending classes. Today she is isolated from her classmates to see if it will change her behaviour. I just wanted to ring Minnie really to talk about how boarding's going. Um, I know that she had a difficult evening on Monday. I think she was definitely highly anxious and was certainly showing some behaviours that we've not seen on boarding before. We were wondering whether it's the best thing for her at the moment to carry on with boarding for the rest of this term. Shut it now, old woman. Or I shall cut you in pieces. And I will ask them if they could take you into bed hospital again and ask them to put you down. They've moved all my cancer and it's, it was in three different places. They just have to work out what treatment. Definitely radiotherapy and maybe chemo. Body. I feel disappointed because they won't let her board. Body. No. <laughs> Can we do it centrally? Come on. I mean, it does get mentally exhausting. Come on. Oh, stop nagging. You always nag, nag. Well, come on, let's do our homework, please.
What does identity mean to you? Knowing who others are. Fantastic. What else could it be? Music, no. things you like, colour that you like, mm. all different things that identify you. Beth is still extremely anxious, creating concern among staff at school about her history of self-harm. I'd had a really, really bad day. Like, suddenly something in my head said, you should hurt yourself. It becomes like a vicious cycle. Like, like the gaps between it become shorter and shorter. And then, like, one cut isn't enough, you have to do more and more. When you're worried about something, it just becomes overwhelming, doesn't it? And you just don't know what to do about it. We use coloured cards with one particular student so that if she uses a red card, we know that that signifies a serious risk of self-harm. With pathological demand avoidance, what she wants to do really is to be in a low demand, low stress environment. That would be sort of like a hospital bed where everybody was running around after her, looking after her and doing that. Beth's specific autism and high anxiety means she will try to control and manipulate the staff. The staff's priority is to tackle her refusal to take part in lessons. She needs firm boundaries that are established yeah. really early on and that are absolutely consistent and non-negotiable. Yeah. You need to acknowledge you've the way that she's of, feeling. Yeah, but you've got to kind of keep, you know, not yeah. to be completely emotionally yeah. blank, but quite mm. neutral from it. I think now we're into tough love and actually she's no different from anybody else. OK, do you know what? PE is the same as every other lesson. It's the same as maths, it's the same as English, it's the same as food tech. Leave me alone! No, the expectation is that that's what you need to do. No! It is not a choice. That is what actually it... at this stupid lesson. No. I just want to be left alone. Okay, that's not an option because this is a school and we have to do things we find hard. I want to go home. Okay, that's not an option. I don't feel very well. Then you just need to get changed and just stand there and do what you think you can do. I think she manufactures reasons for us to um, be sympathetic and kind to her because she mm. thinks that actually the iller I am, the more of that I get. Whereas actually we, mm. we need to change that, don't we? So she actually thinks, actually, the more, cap the more doing it I am, the, the, mm. the, the more praise I get for that. We need to flood her with praise for positive things, don't mm. we? You're a bright, intelligent person and you're good at lots of different things. I'm not coming back next OK, week. well, that would be your choice, won't it? I would really miss you if you didn't come back because I think you've done really well. None of you would miss me because I'm just a pain to you all. No, that's not true. Those are your words, they're not my words. With pathological demand avoidance, we have to put a very tight, rigid structure around that student and she will not like it. And it's a bit like reining a horse in and training a horse in a way. If I thought you genuinely couldn't do it, I wouldn't ask you to do it. Because it's almost like a wildness there that you've got to capture and train. Katie has finally moved on from her ex, Ben. And with the Christmas disco with the local boys' special school approaching, she is looking for a new boyfriend. Who's the one I fancy the most? You're in here to do your work experience, you know exactly what to do, and get on with it. Put the washing up liquid in all of those. One, two, three, four. What? She's determined not to do anything today. So, like this girl on Tuesday? Yeah, I'm coming. I'm excited. What boys do you think are coming? Yeah. Alex. And what other boys? Do you know any other boys from that silk school? I know the whole school. Because you've been to disco. I know the whole school. You know all of them? Yeah. Which ones do you think you're going to dance with then? Probably Alex. Alex. Is he a good dancer? Yeah. I really fancy him. <laughs> he's fit. And he's got long hair as well. And what year is he in, Katie? He's in my year, you're 11. He's in your year. With the school disco approaching, there is only one thing on her mind. And it's not her mock GCSE exams. You've got textiles in the morning and you've got science in the afternoon on Tuesday. And the disco in the evening. 
Oh my god. My mum said if you're naughty ever again until this going at home. Yeah, but you've got between now and Tuesday to revise. I know. Don't pull that face. <laughs> you're just gonna get Tuesday out of the way, then you've got the disco to celebrate. <laughs> Don't say the disco word. <laughs> Tuesday evening, when there's some entertainment. But boys, with boys. In the middle of the exam, Kate started saying really inappropriate things, and she uh, was being very silly, and she was laughing, and then they asked her to leave the exam room, and she wouldn't. Other people in that room get as worried as you do about their exams, don't they? And actually you, having a little episode in the middle of it, it's going to make them more worried. So it's not okay. Miss! How are you? I'm all right, are you all right? No, I'm not. Alex! Have you got another exam this afternoon? Alex! Have you got another exam this afternoon? Two more exams. You just keep it calm until you... And I'll be like, Alex! And then this evening you can celebrate. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> oh, when it's happened now! Oh, well, it's happened now. So, ladies, can we talk about what sort of behaviour do we want to see at the disco? No swearing. No swearing for sure. Not a single twerk in sight, please. Although you can do more skiing representation if you'd rather. Joe. <laughs> Not being silly around the boys. Not being silly around the boys, Katie. That is a great one. Thank you very much. The Sunny Down boys, some of them are autistic. Um, they all have their own little quirky traits like our girls do. Girls have a lot more emotion with their autism, whereas boys keep it inside because they've got to be a man, whereas girls just are crying, worry, and are full of emotions. <laughs> oh, you're upstairs! Being a teenager is tough. I think for these girls, it's really tough. They don't necessarily understand all the social context of growing up. <laughs> I could be talking to someone, annoying them, and I not realise it because I couldn't tell their emotions. It's body language and facial expressions that also get me as well. What else? Alex. <laughs> He's an adorable one. <laughs> He's fit. Yeah, Katie tries to attract the boy she likes, but he's more interested in chatting to his mates. Yeah, I'm terrible with eye contact. Um, I'm not very good at asking questions. I'm not very good with my conversational skills or communication skills. I think my brother's definitely a bit better at talking to girls than me. Have you got any pets? Yeah, we have. What's your have? We have three cats and two lizards. Are you sure? Yeah. Is my boyfriend? Hi. I'm Jamie. I think I pretty much have autism and that kind of affects my social skills. He's fit. We just met tonight. He sounds cute. She seems quite nice. Who she went up to me. Katie. Yeah. She just asked if I've had a girlfriend before. And I said, I haven't. I'm 13 years old. I was saying to myself all day, I can't wait to get Alex, like really hyperly, and I saw him tonight. I look like that with his brother. <laughs> Bit strange, but oh well. I'm happy. I'm not sure where Abby is in her head. I haven't got a clue. Are you coming, Abby? Come on then. Her behaviour, is it driven by autism? Is it linked into her really significant speech and language difficulties? Is it linked into the trauma of her mum being ill? I don't think we can separate those things. I don't know if she really knows how she feels. So today we're just going to have a look at Abigail. It wasn't really working, was it? We weren't really going anywhere other than in a massive circle. 
one of the things that mum said at the admissions interview was that movement is the key. We need to get Abby to move. Whether it is, can you hand the books out? Can you take a message? Anything. This is for your business for you. This is for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is this a present from you, Miss Phillips? It's not really for you, it's for me, but I was just going to do a job. Oh, we are rocking it today. I know. How have you managed that? I don't know. Do you know how I've managed it? By just making complete tit out of myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be a secretary, then you have to do all these sorts of jobs. Amazing, amazing. I'm going to say bye. And then what do you think you press next? Equal. Brilliant. I could do remember. You've forgotten the name? Yes. Hang on a sec. Can you remind me where I'm meant to be Can you remind me where I'm meant to be going? Well done. Oh, oh, hello. What are those for me? Let's go get your next job, Abby. Goodbye. She won't do anything for me. But I think she's been with Emma a couple of times and actually done some work and, and been quite verbal. <laughs> what does that mean when you just do this? <laughs> what does it mean? When you take it. I will take it, thank you very much for offering it to me. Please, can we have the blue boulder back? Yes, of course you can. <laughs> there you, you go, thank you for asking. I have finished with it, actually, thank you. There was some very important information but You've got there. to carry all of that back, which is very important so I don't lose it. Abigail! She has just run off with all the checks. <laughs> one she's got in her hand. <laughs> She'll be writing the cheques in a minute. Can I retrieve that? <gasps> Should yes. we just have a bet as to where she thinks she might have gone with I have money? no idea. I really hope she's not done anything with the cheques because I'm feeling a little bit sick now. <laughs> so is that what it's about? <laughs> what? Silly voices? Yeah, probably. No, that you are prepared to go to it. To... Any lengths, yeah. We will try absolutely anything. It was fun. What made it fun? Laughing. Laughing. Why do you think we were laughing? Because I did it. Because you did your work? Yes. And I laughed? Yes. Why? How did that make me feel Happy. that you did your work? Happy, exactly. You could take a dog for a walk with a child in the middle of a lesson if you need to, if you think that's going to do something to move a situation on or build a relationship. How have we been communicating? Talking. Talking. And it makes people happy. How do you feel about it? Happy. So why have you been so quiet? I don't know. I know. Because you're very clever. <laughs> Am I? Yes. Of course you are. The school's new routine of tough love to manage Beth's specific autism is helping her settle into school life. Sophia got me this bracelet. She got given it when she was going for a tough time. And so she said, I want you to have it now. It's to Beth and it's from Mrs Chips. And it says, a super answer to an exam question and lots of contributions during the lesson. Wow. And Mrs Chips would like to give you two house points too. Things started to get better when I did really well on a science test. They gave me a boost that, oh, I can do it. Maybe could do it again or do even better. Well done to Beth from Mrs Chips for completing your science-based life assessment and getting a fantastic result. Actually, that needs a round of applause on its own. I decided I don't want to self-harm anymore, I'm going to stop. And since middle of December, I haven't self-harmed. I was just determined that I wanted to change what I was doing because it wasn't doing me any good. What we're trying to show, Beth, is actually you can get loads of positive attention for other things. Right, so you haven't had it cut for a long time, then, have yeah. you? It's Beth, in that case. <laughs> you called me in that case. That's <laughs> bonkers as you. <laughs> One parent a few years ago, you know, did say that her daughter was cured and she was perfectly fine now. There is no cure. This is a lifelong disorder. And, you know, what we're trying to do is to give her different strategies and ways of coping with it. I've got a vintage bedroom at home. Aww. Like, with, like, loads of vintage stuff in it. At the rate it was going, you know, you thought that one day she wouldn't be here because it was, you know... Because she was suicidal? Yeah, she just didn't want to be here. She couldn't see any positives in anything. Um, yeah. I think moving to the school and without that help um, and support, I don't know. When you look at your arms, Beth, hmm? uh, how do you feel about them? Proud of how far I've come. Sorry I had such pain in the backside. 
No, cause she said it's some worry. So it's problems. Do you know what? Because I'm so old. Your brain is going. My brain is, I think my brain might have gone actually. You are with the berries. So this is all the things we need Mrs. Chippington to know. You are going to do. Are you going to tell me what to write? Yes. What's the first thing? Chemo. Okay. As it happened, her second lot today. Okay. She lost some hair. Okay. Already. She looks like a bunny rabbit. So cute. Mm. Aww. So what does it do to the cells? Kills them. Kills them. It kills some of the goods. Kills some good cells. And some bad ones. And she could be sick. Okay. Just kind of feel up and down, you know, sick up and, you know, a bit sicky up and down. Sometimes I think, oh, what happens if I die? And if I worry too much, it'll make me physically worse. I said to her, we've all got to go one day, but I try not to say too much about it. So that's about Mum. What about you? How do you feel about all of this? Worried. OK, so we need to put worried on here. It. OK, is this your biggest feeling? Yes. So therefore, do I need to write it in really big letters? Yes. OK, like all over the page or just like... All over the page! OK, before I do that, are there going to be other words that go on here? Upset. Stressed. OK, so we've got stressed and upset. Angry. Oh, I uh -huh. like that one. Uh, oh, I like the way your hair will fall down. Okay, thank you. You look like a bald woman. Do I? I'm pulling some out. No, 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 no. What do you understand about cancer? Yes, I got some out. Okay, all these feelings the worry, the angry, the stress, and upset are they all about this? Why does he have it? Absolutely. Do you know what's exactly what I was going to say? What's the biggest worry? Is she's bit. going to be okay? Okay, worried if she's going to be okay. That's a big worry. What feelings did you feel, Abby? Angry. Yeah, what else? Yes. Worried. Worried. Stressed. Stressed. Upset. Upset. This is a really long journey that we're on with Abby. We're not going to suddenly see a girl who's sitting, engaging in all lessons, shooting her hands up to answer questions, um, initiating conversation with people. Can you tell me, hello chickens, what is, Abby, three lots of ten? Lovely ducks. <laughs> <laughs> what is three lots of ten? Huh? Oh, thank you. I feel confident that by the time she leaves, she will understand that actually school is school and you come here to learn and, that, and she'll be doing that. What do you think of him? He's fit, isn't he? How old is he? 13. That's not on, is it? Hmm. Doesn't matter! <laughs> Toy boy, eh? Hey! hey. Katie's new boyfriend has overwhelmed her thoughts. As she prepares for life after school, she does work experience in an old people's home. Some of the residents here, I don't know, 90? It's quite old. <laughs> You're right. I've got a boyfriend. Oh, how have you? It's Jamie. 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 It's a nice name, isn't it? Very nice. Yeah. It's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining what it would be like if I was old and I forgot who Jamie was. I'd feel guilty. Jamie might feel as if he can't look after me anymore and then he might put me in a home like this and then get visits from him. But that's not yet, though. We're 16. Ages. I don't think she'll be able to live independently. Ever, I don't think. Unless she, you know, greatly improves, but I can't see her. She'll always need help, I think. She knows that she's got Asperger's and she calls it her needs, but I don't think she fully comprehends what it's going to be like for her. It's all right. You did it, Katie. Well done. 
I don't really like being at the school, so I, I'll go and say, I'm never coming back here again. But by Olympus Field, you know, I'll be all happy about that. The sad thing about it, because I don't know what I'm going to do in the big world, it's like, cause there might be more noises and I'll be meeting more people. And like, so when I meet new boys, I get really shy and a bit silly. And I'm worried that I might go really silly over the boys and they might think I'm a weird on that. You know, you can never have a down day with her because she would always bring you up. She will bring joy to anybody that she meets. She's a special little girl, definitely. I wouldn't swap her for another one. No. Right, NJ, off you go to English. So we're going to think now just about how does love make people feel? There are times they wanted to give up, I think, couldn't you? Yeah. Um, I think lots of us said, don't give up, keep going. It will get better. And it has. Obviously, I haven't given up because I'm still here, aren't I? In Romeo and Juliet, there's lots of complicated relationships and lots of feelings of love. One, two, three, four, five, 19, 20, 21, 22 texts. Truthfully, I'm quite obsessed with him. He said to me, I'm really sorry to say this, but I think it takes me a bit too much. And then he almost dumped me. But he said, give me another chance. Well, I do. I lost all my hair. Never mind. We definitely need to talk about the love that exists within a family. Hey, you look like an old granny. You look like an old granny, oh, thank you. The most common misconception about autism is that girls don't have it and you're not creative, that you don't want to speak to people, that you can't make eye contact, that you don't have any feelings, that you don't care about other people, they're all massive misconceptions. Every day we see each other yeah. and we're your best friends. Yeah. If you've met one girl on the spectrum, you've met one girl on the spectrum and, and the other, the, another one that you meet will be very different. Look in the mirror and see autism is different and that's okay. Don't laugh, that is the truth. The prettiest thing autistic girls can wear is themselves.